In this video, we're going to cover the NFC North, the teams that are in it, and break them down, and why I feel the Packers are going to be on top of this division come the end of the year. There's a whole lot to cover, so let's jump into it. Obviously, you know the Packers with Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, they have dominated this division for 30-plus years with those two Hall of Fame quarterbacks on their team. Um, obviously, with the departure of Aaron Rodgers, it left the door open for teams to kind of sneak in there, get the confidence they may need, that little booster that they need, may need. The Lions pounced on that opportunity. The Lions thought that they were that team to step up, and they did. They answered the call. They won the division, but are they legit? They seem to think so. I don't. And I'm going to give you some reasons behind that. So let's jump into it. There's a lot to go over. So when we start talking about the Lions, and just how good they were last year. They were. This is a team that is a you know a losing culture as a whole. This is a team that's not used to winning. The last time they made the playoffs was in 2016 prior to last year. And it was a wild card playoff appearance that they lost. And that's Seahawks. So this is a team that is used to losing. Um, about bringing in Brad Holmes. Bringing in Dan Campbell the culture. They all of a sudden became this winning culture. They're believing in themselves. Is that enough to keep staying on top of the division year after year? I don't think so. Okay. So what did the Lions do this last year, whether it be via draft or free agency out there? They didn't do a whole lot in free agency other than retaining some players on their team, which is key. You know, a lot of, a lot of teams, if they have good players and good Players are developing the culture there. You need to hang on to those assets. The Lions did that. They did that by paying a whole lot of money to Jared Goff, Amra, St. Brown, and Panay Sewell, one of the best right tackles in the game. So this is a, a decent offensive line. I really do think so. But are they penetrable? I think so. And I think that is going to be how teams beat this Lions uh, team. So Here's, a, here's a, one of the reasons why I feel that the Detroit Lions just um, are not going to be on top of the division. And a lot of you may laugh at me when I say this because Jared Goff obviously got paid as though he were one of the better quarterbacks in the league. And I do think he is a good quarterback. I really do. I think he is um, a pretty decently consistent quarterback. Um, I think he, uh, at times is underrated, but then at times overrated. So he's that middle of the road quarterback, in my opinion. Now his numbers, he throws up a ton of numbers out there. He's obviously throwing to one of the best receivers in the league in Amara St. Brown, but when pressured, okay. So when you look at value over average, he is eighth in the NFL when he's not pressured, when he is pressured, he's 23rd. In the NFL, the only quarterback with more interceptions than Jared Goff when pressured, which Jared Goff had seven interceptions thrown when pressured, was Sam Howell with 14. Okay, so I do think if defenses were to send the house on Jared Goff, I think you were going to find that this dude, he is he isn't as good as as maybe his paycheck was. Because I think if you send the house on him, you send some pressure on this dude, which, you know, you've got the Bears having the fifth best defense last year. They only got better defensively. You have the Packers who got better defensively, and I'm going to get into the reasons why. So, and then Minnesota, honestly, Minnesota is a good defensive team and they love blitzing there in Minnesota. That's their culture. They love blitzing. In fact, they were... They sent the most blitzes last year. Whether they were successful with it or not, doesn't matter. They send blitzes. They love to get pressure on the quarterback. And sometimes that just bodes poorly for some quarterbacks out there. Jared Goff, I feel, is one of those quarterbacks. Statistically, when you look at throwing seven picks when pressured, I think this is going to find himself into getting some trouble. I think they're going to hit this kind of the sophomore slump of a wall. Um, I do feel the Lions are going to kind of run into that. Hey, you know, we were the king of the hill last year um, until anybody can knock us off. We're going to be there. And I do think they are going to hit that quote unquote sophomore slump. And I think they are going to be knocked down a peg or two. Now, what I mean by that is this is going to be a very successful Lions team. And at the end of it, I think the Lions are going to finish second in the division. 
Um, and I think it's going to be a neck and neck race and it may end up coming down to just a tiebreaker. But when you look at this offense of St. Brown, Sam Laporta, Sam Laporta is one of the best tight ends in the league. And then they feel they got one of the better running backs in the league with Jameer Gibbs. And then you've got the tandem of him and David Montgomery, a little change up pace there back. Um, they feel they've got their backfield solidified and secured. It is a good backfield. So when you take a look at their defense, this is a defense that had secondary issues last year. They ranked 23rd overall um, in points allowed. They seem to think that they've addressed that in the draft. Obviously, they did go after you know some guys in the draft like Terry and Arnold. They moved up in the draft to pick him. And he's a very talented secondary player. So I do feel the lines are, you know, they're going to be just as good as they were last year. They didn't get worse there. They feel they're going to get better. I do think they stay take a little bit of a step forward um, from where they were defensively last year to where they will be this year. Okay, so this is a very good. Don't mishear me when I say I'm not trying to dog on the lines because the lines are a very, very, very good team. And I do think... They are going to be giving the Packers uh, a run for their money for a lot of years to come, not just this season. So let's that's the lines. Okay, that's the lines breakdown for you. So let's jump into the Minnesota Vikings. Okay, so the Minnesota Vikings really, you know, they've got a very talented offense there. When you look at They've got the best receiver on the planet in Justin Jefferson, in my opinion. And then they've got a, a receiver that I felt was super good last year in Addison. And I think he's going to take a, a big step forward, even from where he was at last year. This is going to be the best duo of receivers out there in Justin Jefferson and Addison. But they're going to run into, quote unquote, a wall of sorts. Um, with leadership there, I think, you know, Sam Darnold is going to be one of those co quarterbacks. He is, he's like a serviceable quarterback. He's good enough to win you some games and not necessarily lose you some games at times. So I think Sam Darnold is going to step into that position and do okay. I don't think he's, he's going to, you know, be the end all there in Minnesota. And that's going to be one of the major, uh, setbacks for this Minnesota Vikings team, um, is the fact that. It's going to be a couple of bad games for Sam Darnold, and then they're going to be like, okay, is J.J. McCarthy our guy? Should we should we punch him in there right now? But when you start talking about, like I said, the, the, the wide receiving room of Jefferson and Addison, that's about it. So the Minnesota Vikings' lack of depth on offense is going to place them last in this division. Obviously, they've added a couple of key additions, one of them being Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is going to be a very nice improve from last year when you start talking about what this team was able to do. Um, and then on the defensive side of the ball, this is a blitz happy defensive coordinator in Brian Flores. As I talked about earlier, um, they have two new edge rushers there in Jonathan Greenard, who what he had 12 and a half sacks last year for the Houston Texans. Then you had Dallas Turner an all American out of Alabama. So, you add those two guys on the edges. This is going to be an improved edge team. And with an already blitz happy defensive coordinator in Brian Flores, I think that this Minnesota Vikings team could cause some disruption for teams like Detroit. Maybe that don't have the offensive line uh, depth as maybe some other teams in the NFC have. So when I talk about the Minnesota Vikings sending pressure, it's not all that, right? When you start talking about um, how often they send pressure, they did. They were they sent pressure the most in the NFC in, the, in all of football, and they only had a thirty two point one percent pressure rate on the quarterback, which didn't fare well considering how many times they were putting pressure on the quarterback. This is a Minnesota Vikings team that I feel is talented. They're certainly going to win some games when you tar start talking about that offense, but it's not going to be good enough. And, and then you've got Hawkins in there as well. It's not going to be good enough to take better than last in this division. This division is just way too deep. This is the deepest division in all of football. Okay. So let's go on to the bears, the bears. 
where do you begin with the Bears? The Bears seem to think they have all of their questions answered with Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams, I feel, is not going to be as good of a quarterback as a lot of people think he is. Now, what leads me to think that? Because when you start taking a look at what he did as a college quarterback, throwing for 30 or more touchdowns, running for 10 or more touchdowns, and and having five or fewer interceptions in multiple collegiate seasons. That's one of the best out there to ever do it. And then you add him into the trio of wide receivers that is there, spending a ninth pick on Roma Dunze, who some feel is the best receiver in this draft, already adding to a wide receiving room of DJ Moore. And then you add a Pro Bowl receiver like Keenan Allen. That is a, a recipe for a disaster for a lot of defensive makeups out there, but Chicago bears. Um, when you start taking a look at, uh, Keenan Allen, so Keenan Allen has some injury history there. Um, he's missed 39 games over his career. He's 32 years old. He's high risk injury guy. Um, I don't see him staying healthy all season for this team, which then puts a lot of uh, a lot of pressure on rookie um, Romo Dunze to kind of just kind of step into that role. Um, uh, and then you take a look at the addition that they have in DeAndre Swift. They seem to think that they have their running back. It is an improved running back room for them. But you look at statistically DeAndre Swift, 521 yards, 617 yards, 542 yards. Last season was his best. He was with Philly. So it was a better offense, thousand yards rushing that, of course, the dude is a multi-purpose back. He can catch. He had 357 yards receiving 452, 389, but he's not that great of a running back. He just was in a good position last year with the Philadelphia Eagles. And I think that his numbers, you know, um, are what they are. Okay. So I see the, the bears, when you start talking about, it's just too early, too fast with Caleb Williams, and then you add in hard knocks plus injuries, you know, injury history with, with Keenan Allen. Um, this is a Chicago Bears team that's going to be a very tough out for a lot of teams out there for the Packers, for the Lions, for Minnesota, for any other team that face. But this is a Bears team that's going to finish third, I feel, overall in this division. Again, too early, too fast. This may be a team that will finish second eventually, depending on how good Caleb Williams is or isn't. Otherwise, this could be a bottom dweller team for a lot of years to come. So let's talk about the Packers. Okay, so when we start talking about what the Packers did last season and what they are going to be doing, this is a very good Green Bay Packer team. Again, when we start talking about the departure of Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, leaving the door open, nobody knew how good. Jordan Love was, but man, oh man, this dude looked like he is just going to be every bit of good as Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers that last half of the season, the last eight games of the season when he threw 18 touchdowns and only one interception. This is a dude that started out super slow Packer team. That was what three and six at one point last season where he had 14 touchdowns, 10 picks. He only ended up with 11 picks on the season after that. That is huge. The Packers Certainly, obviously, the youngest team in the NFL last season and the youngest team to win a playoff game since 1970. This is a very good Packer team, a very deep pa Packer team. I don't think there's a deeper Packer wide receiver. I don't think there's a deeper wide receiving room out there in the NFL than this Packer team. And nobody knows when you start talking about bringing in guys that they did that are, you know, strength and conditioning coach to hopefully help out in with it soft tissue issues, guys that struggled with it, and Eric Stokes, Christian Watson. If that dude can stay out there and stay healthy, wow. Wow, you add him into the receiving room that we couldn't rely on last season. Wow. Sky's the limit there. I think Dontavian Wicks is that good. I think Dontavian Wicks could be the number one wide receiver on this team. Then you throw in a guy like Jaden Reed, who's like a, a Randall Cobb, but I think I feel maybe better in his career. So this is a very good Packer team led by Jordan Love. So 
here is the reason why I feel the Packers are going to be on top of the division. And it has to do with a wild card that the Packers did not have last year. And that is Jeff Halfley. Okay. This is the wild card. This is the tiebreaker between them and Detroit. I feel is going to be Jeff Halfley and what he's able to do and call on defense. This is a very talented Packer team already. When we start talking about the depth that this Packer defense has, they went in the draft. They feel that they've got, you know, answered some, some plugs, some holes that were needed, obviously in the um, linebacker room, adding at uh, um, um, Cooper, Edron Cooper. And then um, you add a guy like Xavier McKinney from free agency. You also lose Aaron Jones, but you add Jacobs. This is going to be a very good Packer team, a very hard out for a lot of teams in the NFL, let alone the NFC North. I do feel, and then you've got Marshawn Lloyd. Marshawn Lloyd is a guy that we really don't talk about. I don't talk about enough, but he and Jacobs are going to be, I feel, one of the best tandems in the league. And then you've got a change of bake, a change of pace back in AJ Dillon out there who could be your goal line guy or whatever. Who knows? Time is going to tell there. But we know that this Packer team is legit and they're only going to be way better because this is a bottom dweller team defensively. And I think Jeff definitely going to take them from the bottom. Even if they jump to like worst case scenario to the middle of the road, that is such a huge improvement from where they were last year. But I don't think, I think this is a Packer team that is super talented on defense. And I feel this Packer team is going to, um, uh, you know, meet a lot of, uh, expectations out there and in fact, surpass them. And then you add a guy like Javon Bullard at safety, who I feel is going to be that stick of dynamite that we keep reading about and hearing about. So this is going to be, um, a Packer team that is going to be a force to be reckoned, reckoned with for a lot of years to come. Am I saying that the Packers are going to be on top of the division every year? It's going to be tough because this is an NFC North that we just talked about. That is going to be a very good NFC North for a lot of years, a lot of years. But I do feel the Packers are going to come out of this division at the top. Leave your comments. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, go Pack Go.